Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a painting on a round piece of watercolor paper. I found this watercolor paper at um, a little shop called Fiddleheads and it is a uh, Shazen hot press watercolor paper and I've never used their hot press before but I have used some of their cold press papers. It is a handmade paper from India, professional grade, internally and externally sized and it actually has kind of a little bit of a waxy sheen on it so I'm hoping that it performs well. Uh, we're going to learn this together, but if I can find this at Blick, I will link it up. It was pretty affordable. Well, it's more expensive than like their um, packs of 5x7 paper, but this was $18.95 for 10 8 inch round sheets, 100% cotton. So let's get to it. I'm just going to use regular pencil. I'm going to sketch this little, uh, it's like a shot glass. It's got some flowers in it. These petunias fell off of a um, a little uh, bouquet, or actually not a bouquet, it was like a, um, oh, you know when you buy flowers <laughs> that are in a pot? That's what it was, it was, a, fly, it was a, um, a pot of flowers that I got my mom, I got one for my mom and one for my sister for Mother's Day, and, um, and a couple of them fell off in the Jeep, so I'm like, well, I'm gonna put those in a little, little vase and I will enjoy them. So that's what I did. And I thought, you know what? I got that. And I and I bought these in Belfast and that's where that little art shop was where I got the brown paper. And I thought, oh, you know what? This will be just perfect for, um, uh, for painting these because a whole composition kind of like fills a circle really well. Let's start by putting our little shot glass in. It's kind of like a trapezoid type shape. And then to do my first flower, I'm gonna draw an oval. And I will, um, I will take a photo. I'll set this up on my little photo area and I'll take a photo with a white backdrop so you can have that to go by if you want. I'm just gonna put in uh, just enough details so that I'll be able to paint it. Not a ton, but I do wanna be able to get, uh, so I hope this comes out. I don't want to, I don't know how this paper will erase because I know the other Shazen paper and the new Jambi paper that I've used in the past have been kind of delicate. So, um, so I'm kind of afraid of, of, of like, uh, damaging it. I'm trying to see. It's one, like, it's like one big petal all the way around there. That trumpet shape's one big petal. So, you know, you just, they're going to be facing us at different, um, different angles. This one down here, got one that's kind of like facing the ground. I just think that's so cool. And got it kind of like a bell shape. Feeling a little stressed out today, so I'm hoping this, this uh, painting will be good. Will be easy and and fairly quick and uh, not stressable. We can hope, right? We can hope. Sometimes, and I gotta get over this, sometimes you get stressed if, if like, oh, this painting is taking too long, nobody's gonna watch a video this long, and I get all freaked, I get all freaked out. I'm trying not to, but you know, I don't know, I've been doing this YouTube channel for over 13 years and I still, I still get worried about those things and freaked out about my numbers and all that, all that yuck. I don't really like the shape of that leaf, but oh well, I got a little one right here. This one just opened. I also thought this would be kind of like a nice no pressure painting because it's like the plant is I mean, it was just like, it's parts that fell off the plant. It's not even like something I need to preserve or worry about, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it makes any sense whatsoever. Who knows? I should take, probably take a couple days off, but I took yesterday off and uh, the weekend off and I was just kind of feeling anxious because of it. I have not earned that time off. I need to hustle. Oh, did you know you're getting a therapy session while you're at it? How do you relax? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> I'm 
here. And there are noises. The girls are home for the summer, kind of in and out, you know, how young people are, other young people lives. Oh, to be 18 again. Not a care in the world. <laughs> yes, I miss those days. I've got a one that hasn't opened up yet. It's kind of like a long bud there. It is like more complex than you think when you start looking at all of the different leaves and and uh, elements. So we got another little bud that hasn't opened up yet. I was going to do this with watercolor pencil, but I'm like, ah, I think I might want to be able to make sure I retain my lines a little bit more. This paper feels really glossy. I hope it's not like only one size, one uh, sided. I don't think it is, but we shall see. We shall see, won't we? Got some smaller leaves. I don't necessarily want to put every every leaf here, but I can always and I can always add some more in. Uh, there was another bigger um, another bud here. There's another flower on the back, but I don't think I'm going to put that in. I think that's just too much. We got a flower and a leaf kind of coming over the edge. Get those little, little leaves in there, and I'm not going to get too fussy with it, really. Um, I'm going to have, I think I'm going to have the light source coming, coming down from that area more than, so I will want to do a little bit of shadow over there, and I probably will add some color to the glass. Um, I like to erase with a soft plastic eraser if I have to do any erasing, because uh, it just doesn't damage the paper, especially if your papers tend to be uh, on the fragile side. I don't know if this is going to be really fragile, but I figured I'd rather be safe than sorry. And I'm just taking out some of the little guidelines that I sketched in there with. And I'm going to use a big brush to dust off the eraser crumbs. And I just used a mechanical pencil. This is a little set that I got from Amazon. Mr. Pen is the brand name, and this is the 0.5 millimeter. Okay, where to begin? <laughs> where to begin? My palette's a little dirty, but that's because I was refilling my pans the other day, most of them, and, or some of them, I should say, and so I had some, like, leftovers on my, um, on my palette. I didn't want to just wash them off because there was some good paint there. Oh, kind of wondering how I want to approach this, really. There's also, like, stems in and leaves in the, the, uh, the jar. So when I start there, maybe I'll just start by wetting the inside. of the jar using my cat's tongue brush from my set through craft ammo. You could also use a round brush if you didn't have this. I will link it down below in case you're interested in picking these up. There are some left. Um, I'm going to take some ultramarine. And I'm going to take a little bit of sap green. And do a little bit of gamboge. I'm 
And um, you know what? I'm going to see what happens if I mix all three. Kind of a nice triad. Or if I mix uh, Gimboge, Ultramarine, and uh, Quinrose, I mean. Get kind of a nice gray. Oh, I like that. Okay. All right. Something else I'm going to do is just pull some of the, I'm going to pull some of that color out into a shadow. And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, the Quinn. Whoops, that's kind of just some other color there. I'm not one to leave my palette really messy, but I, had, I was feeling very precious about the paint that I had spilled. And I want to get some of the pinks from the flowers in my shadow as well. Maybe I'll flick some of that on. I just fling that all over my face. If you... <laughs> Fun fact. It's on the base too. Can even throw a little bit of uh, water over here for the shadow underneath that part of the flower. I like the little textures that are happening there. And a little bit of yellow. I just like to uh, sometimes just experiment and see where it takes me. I'm going to take some of the sap green. I have like, this is all M. Graham sap green, but there's like three different versions of it because I had, uh, I had what was in my pan. I had three different, uh, oh, what do I want to say, uh, ages of the, um, of the paint. It'll be fun to just kind of paint this one right now because it's kind of dipping into the water. want to keep a lot of movement. I 
and some variety in the colors. I think my, uh, I might have some noise in a minute. I do apologize. I'm actually filming this the day I plan on uploading it, so that's probably another little source of my stress. <laughs> because I'm like, am I going to get this up in the prime uh, hour of YouTube's recommending a recommended upload? I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to do what YouTube tells me will work the best. Um, just another anxious YouTuber, what can I say? Hmm, I like the, um, I like that texture in there. This, I bet this paper would be really good for, like, um, the super granulating watercolors. And there's our noise. Alright, I'm just going to throw in a few more leaves. I'm just going to freehand them though. And then I am going to let this dry. Oh, there's like a little um, blemish in the paper. I was wondering how that would how that would do, how that would react. And I can see the... it's got a little head of like a little uh, ding in it. Alright, let's let this dry and when we come back we'll work on the flowers. Let's get back to it. I am going to start, I think I'll start with this flower here. I'm just going to wet the outer part of the trumpet with clear water. A little too much in there. You don't want it to be puddly. You don't, you don't want kind of like standing water. You want it to be kind of like um, just shiny, but you wouldn't want to like, if you tipped it to the side, you wouldn't want the color just to spill out. I'm going to grab, uh, I'll take some of that uh, Quin Rose and add along one side. Actually, I put it on both sides. And I'm going to mix it with some ultramarine blue. Drop it in there and just kind of let it uh, do its thing. Bring that petal out a little bit. If you see like uh, something that doesn't quite look right, then you can go ahead and fix it. I'm going to do the same thing to all the blooms, I think. This carries a lot of water. You have to be careful you don't get too much. But if you do get too much, just blot your brush off and you can set it in the puddle and drink up that color. I'm actually going to wet a couple of them while I'm at it so I don't have to clean my brush so often. Oh shoot. Keep grabbing the wrong the wrong red. I think this is the one I want. I'm going to use up some color on the edge on the mixing area of my palette. Nice refilled ultramarine blue. Gotta love that. I didn't refill my cobalt because I have quite a bit of cobalt left there and I think, I don't think I had a replacement for that in Amgram, so I think I might consider putting a different color in there actually. I like that cobalt, but um, But I don't use it that often. I use Cerulean much more often and Ultramarine. Boy, that's starting to dry already. I guess I can't do two at once. Yep, because like it's not staying wet. I think I might end up with some uh, backgrounds or some blossoms in some of those flowers, but I'm not necessarily sure it bothers me. Let's 
this is definitely not wet enough. If I don't want the blossoms, what I can do is I could clean my brush off and I can set it in the puddle and lift it up. I'll show you how. So clean, dry my brush off, and I can just set it in there and let it soak up that paint. I can actually move it over here. Paint that little Paint some of these little blossoms with it. Still does want to petal a little bit, but not too bad. Again, you can just soak up any, any leftover. We're seeing only one side of this flower here. It's from the edge. It's all the whole trumpet shape. Try to make sure your edges look nice, like you've got that good shaping that you sketched in there. Because it's almost going to be like a silhouette. And just let them flow together where they meet. You can help them a little bit. The ultramarine blue will bring in some pretty texture. And you got this one up here, which is pretty small, so I think I'll just... Oh my gosh, you can hardly see my drawing. a little too much. All right, let me go back to some of the leaves. I like the design of this. I like the shape of it. I like how it fills the space. Um, let's see, sap green is what we were using out here. I take a little bit of ultramarine blue to darken that because I want to just stick with the colors that I've been using. So ultramarine blue is more of a purpley base blue, so it's going to desaturate the green a little bit too. It'll desaturate the yellow and give it um, just a more dark and muted look. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of put some of the darker details and elements that I want. I'm going a lot from my imagination too because I'm not really that interested in doing a completely uh, realistic um, realistic version of it, I guess. I want it a little bit more expressive. I feel like I also want a little bit more of a brighter. effect in some of these. Some of these are just kind of dull. Oh, and you can turn your paper too if you need that to get a better shape on a leaf. I'll 
so I think I'll do a little bit of a little bit of spattering. I like the spattering. A little bit of the, um, a little bit of the detail of the stems and stuff on the inside of the vase. Get our gray again, where we had the um, the yellow, the blue and the red. That sheep on the bottom of the vase, <clears throat> or the shot glass, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, um, let's see. I think I might need to let this dry before I can go on anymore. So let me dry this and then when we come back we're going to uh, finish up the flowers and see what else it needs. I've gone back to the uh, to a, well, I'm, I'm switching. I'm switching. We've been using the cat's tongue brush the whole time but I'm switching to my number eight round. I'm going to mix up kind of a darker purple. Uh, I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and the Quin rose just to, with less water. And this will be less juicy, less wet and wet. This will be more of like um, getting some textures, getting some details, and putting it into these little uh, buds that haven't opened up yet. This is pretty loose. I'm not getting too. Um, I'm not getting too detailed. A little bit of the, a little bit of the veining, and now I'm gonna just clean my brush and gently soften that edge and blend it out a little bit. And the shadow and the pit there, clean blot, and just soften it out, blend it out. So you have the hard edge on the bottom, putting the color in the pit of the flower, clean the lot, and just kind of blend it out.
And then you can also take that color and put it on any of the, um, the trumpet parts of the flower. Should do that with a little liner. I should probably do the veins with a liner. It's not very dainty. I'm just gonna smoosh those out. Hopefully I don't lift everything up that I've put down already. Mixing up a little bit more of that. want this to be darker than the flower itself. Just using it nice and concentrated. We can add another layer of shadow if we need to, if it's not dark enough. All right. You don't want to put any uh, any other little leaves in here or anything. You can do that with any of your shades of green. though I mean that's pretty much all there is to it just do as much or as little as you like for the most part you can add uh, you could add some colored pencil to it if you want to kind of feel like I like a little bit more shadow out there so I'm just gonna throw a little bit more of that in there it's hard not to let the um, the shape of the paper influence you too much when you're doing that because it's kind of like I don't know you kind of want to go with the roundness of the paper but I think I'm just gonna leave that there well you know what maybe I will actually grab that liner brush and do a little bit of line work now that I now that I say that uh you want your paint to be kind of a consistency of uh two percent milk I would say and then um And then line away, I guess. I like to pull the strokes towards my hand. I find that's a little bit easier to control. I think just that little line makes a big difference, actually. I actually can do uh, in between two. You'll get the hang of it. You'll get. You'll know what you like the look of and what is more, most comfortable for you. And if you want just lines to go down to the center of each point, or if you want them in the in between areas as well, because you will see some. Uh, usually the ones in the center of the flower are a little bit a little darker and then the other ones are a little bit lighter. Sometimes it's fun. I don't actually have, there isn't any of these in this particular um, arrangement, but sometimes it's fun just to do some like vines. I think I want to add some little vines in here just because I feel like the green is kind of heavy. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of just kind of throw in some tendrils.
might want to practice in a practice on a scrap first. Because I think of these and I think of morning glories. Morning glories have a lot, have a lot of vines, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like it needs something. Give it a little bit of vitality. Well, these little these little tricks that you can add to um, break things up if they're feeling a little dull. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is actually do some spattering with some yellow. I think I might switch to a larger brush for that. This is the larger round that comes in my kit. That's a it's a um, when I designed my set for craft ammo, I wanted to choose brushes that I didn't think that would be in just like a standard set. So I kind of wanted to like if you had a, just a basic set of brushes that you're happy with. These would just kind of be ones to kind of add in. I feel like I want to just add some little dots here and there or something. I feel like yellow is just needed. It's needed to make the purple a little more purpley. If you got too much anywhere, you can just simply just blot. There, I think I'm going to call that done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, of course, if you do this or any of the other tutorials, you can always tag me on Instagram at Lindsay Wyrick, and I love to see what you create. There you have it. I will share a photo on Instagram of the still life as well. So you can check that out if you want to um, use that to paint along and I'll have it on my blog in a day or two as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you told a friend about my channel. Uh, I can use all the help I get. You can get, you can give me a thumbs up. That also helps. And leaving a comment also helps YouTube know that people are engaging with this and other people might enjoy watching my free painting tutorials. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.